Let's look at how to process GST when we are receiving and charging GST on sales. So just a little bit of a summary. This is what we know about GST. It's called GST clearing. Uh, that's a, or shown to be a liability and we kind of use an analogy that it's a big top. And because it's a liability, it has the rules of debits and credits of a liability, just like a loan or accounts payable. And what happens is when the business makes sales, so in this case, 60,000 and 40,000, it charges GST on those sales, whether they're cash or credit. So when we receive GST or charge GST from or to our customers, the liability goes up. So in this case, the liability will go up 10,000 and that would be a credit in our GST clearing ledger. But the government says you get to, so you owe the government $10,000 in this case, but the government says you get to take out all the GST you've already paid or been charged by your suppliers. So in this case, if we had these cash payments here, they came to $80,000 and we took the GST, that comes to $8,000, I'd get to take $8,000 away from this $10,000 and the water line would go back down. In other words, our liability would decrease and that would be a debit. So that's what we know. Another thing we know is that in our course, some things do have 10% GST on them with regard to receipts and revenues, and they are cash sales, credit sales, and sales returns. So we haven't dealt with sales returns, so we're just not going to talk about that now. We'll talk about that when we come to it in a couple of chapters time. So we only need to worry about GST for cash sales and credit sales. We don't need to worry about GST for any of these things. Receipts from accounts receivable, capital contributions, receiving a loan, and so on. So we're not going to talk about those now because we're not doing those in this chapter. Let's have a look at the rules of debits and credits. So we're going to need those. We know we've got a loan rate, so we remember it in that order, or if you prefer, a loaner. And we're going to need to look at a few rules this time for assets, uh, liabilities, revenues, and expenses. So let's just go back to something else we already know, is that when a business sells something, it involves both a revenue and an expense. Example, a sports store sells a pair of runners, these pair of runners here. For two hundred dollars cash, we're just going to forget about GST for one second. We're going to say the business gives them to the customer. Customer gives the business two hundred dollars, and then we look at our accounting equation. Everything should always balance uh, to this: assets equals liabilities plus owners' equity. So we have got two hundred dollars cash. That's an asset going up, and we made a sale. That is uh, an increase. Uh, it's a revenue. Sorry, and a revenue increases owners' equity. So that's cool. But we also know that actually we can't say we've made a profit of $200 on this sale because before we bought or sold those uh, shoes, we had to buy them. So we had to get them from a supplier. And let's say in this case, we got them from the supplier for $50. And we won't worry about GST just for this little analogy here. So the supplier gave them to us, here's our business. We gave the supplier $50. We then took the pair of shoes, sold them to the customer, for $200. And what we say is that that is actually an expense called cost of sales. When I sell that, it becomes an expense. So really, I got $200 cash, assets go up, I got $200 of revenue of sales, but I had to give up some inventory, I had to give up $50 of inventory, so the inventory asset goes down, and that's called a cost of sales expense, and the expenses make owner's equity go down. And if I balance all that out, so assets went up 200 but down 50, that's a total of up 150. Liabilities weren't affected, and owner's equity went up 200 but down 50, that's a total of 150. So that's kind of a recap of everything we know. What we're gonna do now is add in some GST to these concepts. When we have a revenue, that's the sale amount, there's the expense called the cost of sale, and then we make a profit, in this case of 150. And we're just gonna apply that to our accounting equation. So let's just take an example of a cash sale. It says 1st of March, March, cash sale of $1,000, plus $100 GST, cost of sale was 400. So we've got these little, I call them transaction tables. We're not allowed to really use them, or we can't use them actually on SACS or the exam. But we're gonna use them while we're learning because they're very helpful. And we're just gonna take it one account at a time here. And the first thing we wanna do with sales is realize that now there's actually two things being received. So this is our business here. So if this is our business, um, yeah, well, actually what the customer is going to give us is two things. They're going to give us $1,000 for the sale, in this case, the product that they're buying, but they're also going to give us $100 of GST. So if you're confused about how GST works, look in the link to, or the description of this video for a link to how GST was designed to work. But the customer is actually going to give our business $1,100 today. So that's what we've got to deal with. So let's do that. So all we're gonna do is take it one, uh, uh, one account at a time. First one that's gonna be affected is cash. Cash is an asset and it's gonna go up. The business is gonna get $1,000 plus $100. So it's gonna go up $1,100 and the rules say that's a debit. So debit for an asset increasing. We have made a sale. 
a sale is a revenue. That's a revenue account that's increasing. And the sale in this case is a thousand. So that would be a credit. That's what the rules say. And the thing that's new is we say there is also GST on this. The account is called GST clearing. We assume it has the rules of a liability. And when we charge GST, like we just said earlier, that is a liability increasing. And when a liability increases, that's a credit. And we can see here our debits of 1100 equal our credits of 1100. So that balances. We've also got to deal with this cost of sale. So there's cost of sales. That's an expense. That's an expense going up. That is $400 in this case, and that would be a debit. And lastly, we'll go to inventory. That's an asset. It's going down because we have to give up some inventory. And when an asset goes down, that's a credit there. Debits equal credits. And what we should do before we put these in the ledgers is just go, well, does our accounting equation balance? So let's have a look here. So let's just take it one row at a time. This was an asset increasing 1100. So that goes there. Next one was a revenue increasing a thousand. Now revenues don't belong in the accounting equation. However, revenues increase on his equity. So that would have the effect of increasing this one here. We've got this one is a liability going up a hundred. So that'll go there. And what we can see is this actually equals this little mini transaction. We've got cash or assets going up 1100 equals liabilities up a hundred plus owner's equity up a thousand. So a thousand plus a hundred is 1100 both sides equal. And what we want to do is kind of treat these sales as two transactions. The first one is kind of to do with the sale price and that's got three parts to it. The second bit is the cost of sale. So that was an expense going up 400. And again, there's no expense there, but expenses make owner's equity go down. So this cost of sale would make owner's equity go down 400. And then lastly, we've got inventory. That's an asset going down 400. So that would go there. And this little mini transaction balance as well, uh, negative 400 equals zero plus negative 400. Beautiful. And if we total it all up, the assets went up 1100, but down 400. That's a total of up 700. Liabilities went up 100. And owner's equity went up 1000, but down 400. That's a total of up 600. Up 100 plus up 600 equals up 700. Beautiful. That balances. So we can now go and put that in our ledgers. How do we do that? Well, we're going to have five ledgers, one for cash. One for sales, one for GST clearing, one for cost of sales, one for inventory. Let's just take it one roll at a time. First one was a debit to cash. Now, if you've seen the other videos, you'll know I just put the date in and the amount. I do the referencing last. That's just how I do it. You can do it however you want. But I think it really helps to explain it in a second when we do the references this way. So that was cash debit 1100. Then it said go to sales and do a credit of 1000. That's it there. Go to GST clearing and do a credit of 100. So that's there. Cool. Now I'm going to match these up because this little transaction here is actually separate to this cost of sales inventory. So I'm going to do the referencing for this sale amount part. And what I'm going to write in cash is actually what we call a double reference. We're going to do these all the time, but it's the first one we've come across. I'm going to write the names of two ledgers there. I'm going to write sales slash GST clearing. And the reason I'm doing that is there's a debit in cash. And we're saying, where would you find the matching credits to that? Well, it's actually in two ledgers. There's one called sales here. So I wrote sales. But sales has only got a thousand of it. It doesn't have 1100 of it. So I would write slash GST clearing because that's where the other credit is. Now, what would I write in my sales ledger? That's a credit. I want to know where the debit is. The debit is in a ledger called cash. And likewise for GST, where's the, this is the credit. Where's the debit? It's in a ledger called cash. Some questions might call the cash ledger bank, cash at bank. It doesn't matter. Whatever it's called, that's fine. The next one was cost of sales, do a debit of 400. So do the date, debit 400, and then it says inventory, do a credit of 400 there. And now I'm gonna match those up with references. So on cost of sales, that's the debit. Where will I find the matching credit in this uh, ledger account here called inventory? And in inventory, there's a credit. Where will I find its debit? In cost of sales. Beautiful, we're all done. So there's quite a bit there. That's five separate things to record one transaction. And that's the most we'll have all year. So that's very, very complicated. Let's do the same thing, but with a credit sale. And really this is gonna be very similar. Okay, so we'll go through this one a bit quicker. You can pause the video, slow it down, rewind it. But basically the first thing to remember again is in this case, it's a credit sale of $2,000 plus $200 GST. 
the cost of sale was 900. Well, again, we're, we're the business and we're actually going to charge the customer 2000 for the product and 200 for GST. That's like they're buying two things today, the product and some GST. So for our business, we're actually going to charge them today 2200 So that's really important. And it's really important because the first account that will be affected is accounts receivable. That's an asset and it's increasing and it will go up by the 2000 but also that GST. So it will go up by $2,200. And when an asset goes up, that's a debit. Now, the rest is actually going to be the same. The amounts are just going to be different. So the next account was sales. That's a revenue. So revenue increasing. When a revenue goes up, that's a credit. GST. We are, that is a liability. We are charging it to the customer. So when we charge it to the customer, even though we haven't got it, our liability goes up because they will pay it to us eventually. We'll deal with that in another video. When a liability goes up, that's a credit. It's the exact same entry as last time, just different numbers, and we did it to accounts receivable. Now, the next part will be the same. Cost of sales is an expense. It's going up. Expenses go up on the debit side. And so likewise, same as the last transaction, inventory is an asset. It's decreasing. When assets decrease, that's a credit. And if we just check our accounting equation here, so we had accounts receivable asset go up 2200 We had our sales, which increases owner's equity, 2000 We had our liability called GST clearing go up. And that balances 2200 equals 200 plus 2000 And then we got this cost of sales bit. So that was an expense. Expense decreased owner's equity, 900 And also the, the asset called inventory went down 900 And this little bit balances too. Negative 900 equals zero plus negative 900. Just total them all up. This side goes up 2200 but down 900. That's a total of 1300. Liabilities went up 200. And owner's equity went up 2000 but down 900. That's a total of 1100. Beautiful because 1100 plus 200 equals 1300. And we balance. What we're going to do is put those in ledgers and we'll do the same five ledgers except for the first one. Instead of putting it into cash or bank, we'll put it into accounts receivable. The other ledgers will be the same. So, first one, debit to accounts receivable, then it was a credit to sales, a credit to GST clearing, and now I'm going to reference them. So in accounts receivable, I'm going to do a double reference again. I'm going to write sales slash GST clearing, just like I did last time, because the credits are in this account here called sales and GST clearing. What about here? This will be slightly different. So this time I'm going to write the name. This is the credit. I'm going to write the name of the debit. The debit is in an account called accounts receivable. And likewise, I'll do the same for GST. Now, with the previous one, we wrote cash. So that's a little bit different. But all we're doing is matching it up. We're saying that's the credit. We're just going to find where the debit is. Cost of sales, that will, and inventory, that will actually be the same entry with the same reference. In cost of sales, we'll write inventory because that's, that's, well, that's the debit and the credit's in inventory. And in inventory, we'll write a cross-reference of cost of sales because that's a credit and the debit is in cost of sales. All done. So if we just had a quick comparison there and put all those up, obviously the amounts are different, but if we look at that and go, well, how are they different? They're very, very similar, except for with a cash sale, the debit goes to a ledger called cash. Whereas in a credit sale, the debit goes to an account called accounts receivable. The only other difference was with the referencing in the sales and GST clearing ledgers. In When it's a cash sale, we write cash. And when it was a credit sale, we write accounts receivable. I just abbreviated that there. That's an acceptable abbreviation. You can abbreviate accounts receivable to, to what you can see there. And the cost of sale was actually identical for both. It was the exact same thing. Obviously, the numbers are different, but in terms of the referencing and the debits and credits, that is identical. So, basically, the credit side of the GST clearing ledger will tell you the cash sales and credit sales for the period. So, you might get a question, and I've seen this on previous exams, where they just give you the GST clearing ledger and they kind of get you to, you know, calculate some numbers from it. So, let's have a look here. If I look at these and the numbers, uh, we just made some numbers up here with some dates, okay? But the important thing is the references, because from that, I can tell what the cash sales were. So, look at this one on the 1st of March. That's got to be a cash sale, because that's saying, that's the credit to GST clearing. Where's the debit? It's in a ledger called cash. So that must have been a cash sale. So that was $100. So that must mean the GST on that was 100 Now I know GST is 10% of the, the sale price, so the revenue must have been 1000 Then we got the 15th. I charged $700 GST. That must have mean that must have meant the revenue was 7000 And on the 24th of March, I charged $500. That must have meant the revenue was 5000 I can total that up and go, my cash sales were $13,000. 
plus 10% GST of 1,300. And I can tell that just from looking at that GST clearing ledger. Likewise, I can do the same with my credit sales. The reference will be different. Instead of saying cash, it'll say accounts receivable. So the first one we got here is on the 2nd of March and the GST was 200. That must have meant the sale or the revenue was 2,000. Uh, we got the 7th of March. It says accounts receivable 400. That's the GST. So the revenue must have been 4,000. And then on the 19th of March, the GST was 300, and it says accounts receivable, so that's a credit sale, and it must have been for 3,000, I can total that up, and go that's $9,000 of revenue plus $900 of GST. Just for all that information, just from looking at that ledger. So, um, that just leaves one thing to understand that we haven't done, and it might, you might have a question from earlier in this video where you go, actually, you kind of skip something, because if we look at, here's what we just did for the cash sale and the credit sale, for both of those, with the cost of sale entry, there was no GST. There was only GST on the sale. In this one, the sale was 1,000, so the GST was 100. And here, the sale was 2,000, so the GST was 200, but we didn't do any GST on the cost of sales. So what we'll look at in the next video is why is there no GST on cost of sales?